20 years ago yesterday, this man changed my life and changed the world of mixed martial arts forever. I remember staring in Midtown Toronto at a screen and watching you do what you did, changing the world of mixed martial arts forever. Look how far we've come, but can you go back to those days and remember you know, what it was like for Horion and everyone to put the UFC together and where it is right now? Man, it was a, it was a battle. Because a lot of people was against, they did not, they're like, how can we, how can you, how, how can you, how, how are you going to put two men fighting on live TV when it's illegal to fight in the streets in America? You can't, a lot of people was like, there's no way this is going to happen. It happened. And today we're here, 20 years later. And so much has changed now. I mean, there's the, there's the evolution of introducing Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, what your father brought to the table, to the world, and then the fighters learned that, and the wrestling, and the boxing, and, and, and Muay Thai, and stuff like that. Where do you see the sport going in the next 20 years? If I had that crystal ball, I would be playing the lotto. <laughs> but it's gonna grow. It's, there's still a lot of uh, states and countries that don't allow them. But that's a question of education. You gotta have to educate the crowd, the people, that's not just a brutal sport. It's uh, two professionals, two martial artists getting in, and there's all kind of rules, and there's time limit, and there's the referee they can stop, and the judges, and, and the doctor can stop the fight, and the cornermen, and the fighters can stop anytime they want. So it's a lot of people in control. Can you walk me through back in the day, because I talked to a bunch of people that were putting together the UFC back in the day, and, and when they said, when, when Horian said, I'm gonna throw my, my younger, skinnier brother Hoist in there, and people were like, what are you, crazy? You can't put Hoist in there, he's too small, he's too skinny. But when they came to you and said, you're gonna be the one to represent the Gracie family, can you walk us through what went through your mind at that time? Man, emotions are very small inside of me, so it's like, when they told me, I was like, great, that was what I was expecting. It wasn't like I was jumping around, no, there was none of that. If you watch my victories, I never celebrate, really. It's just raise my hand, thank you very much. That's my job. So, yeah, I was happy that I did it. I'm glad that I did it. And I knew what I was doing. So they trust me. They knew I had what, what I had to do. They knew, and they trust me, so it was good. And I definitely trust you because that's how I got into jujitsu. And I want people to understand what, what your father brought because your father at the time was small, he was frail, he, everybody was bigger than him. But he figured out a way to change the jujitsu that was brought over to Brazil to make it better for the smaller man. And that was the whole point for you guys is to use jujitsu on a larger opponent. And you were outsized a lot, even when you fought guys like Dan Severn. I never forget my dad and I sitting there crying when you put on that submission. It was just unbelievable. Can you talk about what jujitsu is? for the smaller person, for the woman that tries to defend themselves against a larger opponent? It's just the art of self-defense. It's not an art to beat up the opponent. It's, a, it's to, for you not to lose the fight. I'm going to teach you how not to lose. So if you, if, you can, if you can't lose, if you don't lose, the question now is how are you going to beat him? And when you're going to beat him? When he makes a mistake, when he loses. So it's a lot of inside your head. It's not just a brute fight force. Nah. A lot of leverage, technique. You gotta know what you're doing, like swimming. If you don't know how to swim, you're gonna drown. If you know how to just float, kick water right there, you stay there all day long, no problem. 20 years ago and more, or less, excuse me, less, when that Gracie train would happen on my screen, we would sit up on the edge of our couches, or we would sit on the edge of our seats saying, okay, now it's time. The battle is about to start. Today, the Gracie train was reintroduced 20 years later as you brought George St. Pierre to the open media workouts. What was going through your mind? What do you think was going through George St. Pierre's mind as, as he's hanging on to his idol walking up the stairs to the mats here? Man, I felt like my father. My father was ahead of us, leading the pack. So that makes me feel old. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you said it on me, but let me, let, me, let me say this. George has a very tough opponent on Saturday night, uh, Johnny Hendricks. And many believe that this is the guy to defeat George St. Pierre. I'm not saying I agree with that because I think what George brings to the table is, is incredible, but Johnny Hendricks is a very dangerous fighter. What do you envision that, that, that George St. Pierre needs to do to, to continue to defend his title and, and be successful in the, in the octagon? First thing, he got he to gotta play defense. If he doesn't lose again, the question is how is he going to win? He's, uh, yes, Hendricks is very tough. You see, he got everything to win, but hey, St. Pierre knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what to do, how to push, how to defend himself. He's good to go. And people probably want to know, when you coming back up to Canada? I know Canada is a big country. We're from Toronto. You've been around the country numerous times. The last time I saw you in Canada, I brought the gig. We got to roll a little bit. But when are you coming back to the country? 
I was just there about uh, three weeks ago in Vancouver Island, in Vancouver. I was just there teaching. So now I'm coming back when the snow melts, man. It's too cold for me over there. <laughs> Typical Brazilian candy. But you, you should be snowboarding. You, you, you're, you surf, don't you? I snowboard, I ski, but I, I won't stay too long on the snow, man. Come on. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. There he is, the legend, Hoist Gracie himself.